This is MikeBot. Today, I'm going to be doing an unboxing on the Inspire 3D Scanner by Revelpoint. This is their latest scanner, and there was a Kickstarter on it, I believe, last year. I don't know what it sold for, or what the cost was, or any of that stuff. But I've decided that I need a 3D scanner, and I now have my hands on one. This 3D scanner is a budget scanner, meaning it's under $500, which is pretty good price for a 3D scanner, considering they usually cost thousands. So the Inspire 3D scanner is a handheld scanner. It's meant to be portable, and it scans up to 18 frames per second or 18 FPS. It has a 0.2 millimeter accuracy, meaning you're not going to get the highest quality detail on all your objects but you're going to get a fairly decent resolution it is also capable of full color 3d scanning you can use this thing with android ios mac windows and you don't need a powerhouse of a computer to run it just an advanced computer we're going to say not a high horsepower computer but an advanced one you probably won't be able to do it with a basic one this 3d scanner comes with a ton of accessories which you don't typically get with 3d scanners it comes with a turntable it comes with all the specialty mats it even comes with the little uh, dot stickers which help increase the um, re re readability of the object you're trying to scan and get the little nooks and crannies kind of thing uh, it comes with a stand it comes with all the cables you need and it comes with a calibration mat you don't need to calibrate this right out of the box because it comes calibrated straight from the factory. They recommend you calibrate it once a year or when the quality of the scan starts to drop significantly. One of the biggest issues with 3D scanning has been the post-processing. So they just, uh, by they, I mean Revelpoint, just released their new Revelscan 5.x software, which is supposed to make it a lot easier so you don't need to use Blender or any of the AutoCAD type software, supposedly. But I will do a scan right at the end of this video and demonstrate how it works. So you have two scanning modes. You have the turntable scanning and handheld scanning. Turntable will obviously be more accurate because your hand's not shaking if you're doing handheld mode. But there is that option for handheld mode if you need it. And it comes with something called an IMU stabilized tracking chip that's kind of built into the camera. It has uh, USB and Wi-Fi for connectivity. It's fairly light. I think it only weighs two or 300 grams. It only takes about five watts of power. And all that in a package is supposed to give you these crisp, sharp details of up to 0.2 millimeters and fast 14 to 18 frame per second scanning speed. The maximum capture size for models, uh, it says 308 by 225 by 500 millimeters. But I looked into this a little further and apparently it does 2000 millimeters cubed as max scanning size but I don't know are you gonna scan something that size with a cheap low-end budget scanner I don't know but it's gonna make your DIY projects a lot nicer and if you're trying to replicate or duplicate an item that doesn't exist anymore this is fantastic for that it also has a flash LED built in which is supposed to help remove shadows from your objects essentially especially colored ones and with the flash obviously it's going to enhance the lens which is going to give you more vivid textures and colors the format output for this is your typical obj sdl and a ply which is compatible with basically every cad software out there the recommended softwares are typically fusion 360 blender zbrush I think Blender is the only one that's really free. There might be a way to get Fusion 360 free, but you have to be a student and you got to meet all these certain criteria. So as you can see in my unboxing here, it does come with a ton of stuff, including a little demo object that you can scan. I will not be scanning this demo object. I have another object, object I'm going to scan for the demo. I don't plan to do color scanning in this video, but I will do one in a future video. So... Let me know in the comments if you want to see one, and I'll do one sooner than later. I might do a bust of myself. I'm not sure yet. That's going to be a lot of work and time and effort to put into trying to do a bust. Can I do my entire full body? I don't know with a scanner this size, but theoretically you should be able to. 
It has a class 1 infrared light and the working distance is 250 millimeters to 500 millimeters. So you can't be too, too far away. So you want to be kind of near the object when you are scanning it. They do have another model for long distance scanning, but let me just start out with this one and see what happens. Try to work out a deal with them down the road in the future. See if I can get my hands on other ones to test. So like I said, they give you everything you need to get started and I'm going to do the demo and hopefully they're right on how easy it is now, supposedly. 3D scanning still lacks behind compared to where 3D printing is at today. That's why I've always been kind of reluctant to do it. I believe you can also run this on batteries. It claims three AAA batteries, but uh, I'm not sure. We'll see, I guess. So that's it for the overview. You've seen the unboxing. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so. It's greatly appreciated and make sure you check out my Patreon. So I'm going to go ahead, get my dual shot cameras going here and uh, we're going to run a demo. And while I'm running the demo with my camera, I'm going to do a screen recording and show you all how it works in the process. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them below. So as you saw in the unboxing video, I purchased an extra set of the dot stickers. Apparently I didn't need them because it came with some, but I know I will end up going through all of them, especially if I end up keeping this camera. So I'm going to go ahead and keep them. Uh, I got those ones off uh, an off brand. I think they were like 20 bucks for the set. They are a little expensive, but they're cheaper than the Revo Point version. So I want to mention I have baby powder here. So with 3D scanning, uh, from what I've read, you typically need to spray it with a, a light blue spray, which enhances the scans, or you can use baby powder to coat the object and it's supposed to help. Now, this is only needed for objects that are black, like this object here that I'm going to be scanning, or for transparent. And I think there's one other color that causes issues. So I will be coating the object in the baby powder before I start the scanning. So first thing we need to do is I'm going to go ahead and unplug, uh, sorry, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the 3D scanner and I'm going to run a firmware update. And once that firmware update is done, we will proceed with the scanning process. So I've just plugged the camera in and then that's what we see. Red flashing light in the back. Now it's green because it's connected and it's all popping up here. Ink on my laptop. And there we go. It says the scanner is connected. So now it says it needs to be recalibrated. So I guess you're going to see a calibration video. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to just ignore this for a sec. I do want to run a more update. One more update. I will go ahead and run the calibration. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Canada here. Because I'm Canadian. Confirm that. Just gonna wait for it to reconnect itself. Give it a second, so unplug it. Wait for it to connect the camera again. Again, this is what we see. And now I will start the calibration process. So I'm gonna follow the on screen instructions here and I'm gonna grab the calibration pad. So it says to hold the camera vertically, as you can see me doing here. And now I'm gonna click start. So I need to do one full rotation, so I'm going to do that again. Okay, so the vertical calibration is done. Now I'm going to do the horizontal. And the calibration is done. I didn't need the calibration mat after all. I probably will when I do a full on calibration. So again, now I'm going to go back to looking for the firmware before I start any scanning. Now, it looks like the firmware is up to date as um, it doesn't ask me to do a firmware update. So we'll skip that for now. So now I'm going to go ahead and click new project. 
and I'm going to get the camera set up and we'll start the scanning. I'm just going to call it test for now. Go new. And here we can see everything. Great. So now I'm just going to set this mat up. Grab my object here. Yeah, you can't even see it, unfortunately. So uh, I'm, I'm going to drop the mic for a sec and just coat it with baby powder and then proceed. But just find a way to orient this. camera here so I can kind of properly uh, have the object shown. I'm just going to pause the recording here. I need to clear all the baby powder off the table, move everything out of the way, and then proceed. Okay, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to talk throughout this process because uh, my computer kind of jammed up. It doesn't like screen recording and 3D scanning at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and try this again, and I will voice over everything I did afterwards. So essentially, I'm just going to plug the camera back in and uh, start the scan while the baby powder is still on the object. Okay, so I let it do a couple rotations there, and uh, let's just see what happened. I'm just going to enable the dark object scanning and click resume here. Okay, so I just messed up. I'm going to cancel and redo everything. I'm going to hit standard accuracy. Feature tracking. General object is going to be dark scan. There we go. And I'm going to click start. And I'll just let it do its thing here. So I'll let it scan, I'm going to walk away, and I'll come back once I think it's done scanning. I'm just going to let it go for about a thousand frames. Alright, I'll go ahead and hit complete here. I'm going to do the one-click edit. Once it's done, I'll pop it into Bamboo Studio, see what that looks like, and uh, we'll wrap up this video. But stay tuned for many, many more 3D scanning videos coming soon. Mind you, this is my first time using this software, so this is like an unboxing and demo of somebody that's never touched a 3D scanner in their life. And just to show everyone how easy or difficult it can be. I'm just going to see if I can detect any isolation. Okay, overlay, let's smooth it out a little, let's not simplify it, let's do some meshing, aha, now it's starting to look a lot better, much, much better. Might have to rescan it afterwards because the bottom didn't scan the way I wanted it to, but it's looking good so far. And let me just export. I'm just going to open it with 3D Builder. Looks actually half decent. So just for the sake of this test, I'm just going to save it, pop it into Bamboo Studio, see what it looks like. But I will go through this properly on my own and not through this quick little demo video and redo it. But I'm very satisfied with my first ever scan and how half decent it came out. Okay, so I'm just going to export it now. I'm just going to open it in Bamboo Studio. Now, obviously, it's going to need a bit of cleaning up, but honestly, I am pretty satisfied. So what I'm going to do um, off camera and just on my own, just so I can get some practice in, I'm going to take a little credit card or toothpick and scoop those out because there's baby powder in there. I'm going to just add some more baby powder to the bottom and more to the top. And I think this scan is going to come out pretty decent, actually, overall. 
but uh, yeah, so that's it for the video. Um, so there's a quick little demo, the unboxing. I will be making more videos. If you want to see anything specifically, let me know in the comments and I will make more 3D scanning videos. By the time this is uploaded, I'll probably would have done five or six more scans at least on my own. And I'll have more experience and a better understanding of everything and I'll be able to answer everything properly. So that's it for now. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you like this video, please hit the uh, like button if you didn't let me know why. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to my channel and make sure to check out my Patreon. I put on some really cool stuff there and uncensored stuff that YouTube won't let me put on. Not inappropriate. Get your mind out of the gutter. Anyway, thank you again for watching. Mikebot out. Thank you for watching Mikebot Entertainment.